Uh, thank you for joining me this afternoon. Quick review. We all know our why, changing lives through aviation. We've heard the great uh, Mr. Wayman story. Our hiring principle, energy, intelligence, and integrity. And today we get to talk about our second waypoint, curiosity. So naturally, curiosity is very important in a school, right? If we weren't curious, we wouldn't be growing as pilots, as instructors, as students, and as people. So we've got to think a little bit about what is curiosity, right? Is it uh, asking questions? Is it uh, book curiosity? It's, it's often trying to figure out, uh, we get into a, a, a rhythm sometimes as instructors of spoon feeding our students of telling them exactly what they need to know, right? But what we really want to do is foster that curiosity to find out the answers, right? So curiosity, never stop learning and always keep growing. When you come across someone that thinks they know everything, and I know we've all had a student like that, thinks they know everything, and maybe some of the people in this room, right? That as instructors, as teachers, you really learn that there's so much left to learn, right? They often say that a private pass license and sometimes even a commercial license is a license to learn, right? So when you finally, uh, when you hear someone say that there's nothing left to learn, they stop growing, they become stagnant, right? And so we're always growing, it's a lifelong pursuit, lifelong endeavor. And so I always like to hear, uh, what have you recently learned and how, right? This is a little bit of a larger group, so maybe we're gonna save this exercise for the end, all right? We want to teach our students how to find answers. That means when you're trying to find out decision altitudes, things like that, refer to the pilot's handbook, refer to the far aim, so they know how to find those answers. A lot of people are turning to Google right now. Do you think that the examiners are gonna be happy when a student pulls out their phone to Google something, right? But they're perfectly happy when they say, all right, let me refer to the far aim. You know, I know it's in this section, uh, or the P hack, and so on. So. A very strong phrase, I want everyone to say it with me, is, I don't know, let's find out. Let's try it together. I don't know, let's find out, right? Oftentimes, as the instructor, you know, students are really looking up to you, and you gotta feel this pressure to know everything. We, we know that's not even logically possible, right? So, it's very reassuring to a student, instead of saying, uh, you know, go find out, or I don't know, and just leaving it alone, I don't know, let's find out is very powerful. I don't know, let's find out, pull out your far aim, pull out your pilot's handbook, let's go ask the chief pilot. Uh, those are all very strong tools and everyone learns together. It's, it's leading by example, showing them how to go out and find answers, all right? So this is a fun little activity. We've got a lot of groups. So what I'm gonna do is in three groups, group A, B, and C, these groups might be too big. <laughs> Try, talk amongst yourselves, and think of something you've learned recently and how you learned it, all right? Whoever has the best story, one per group, we're gonna share those, all right? So let's just take uh, two minutes, turn to your group, something you learned recently and how you learned it. It could be about anything, not just about aviation. Come on, group A, B, C. <laughs> and how did you learn it? Who's all this? Oh, this is our group too? Yes, I do. Why are you looking back? I don't know. I learned about the difference between CIC and SIC. So, pilot in command and second in command, it can basically be broken down into your aviate, navigate, communicate functions. So, the PIC has to do the aviate navigate functions and SIC is doing um, back basically like checking on those functions as well as communicating. And you learned that from just a book that was in the store? Yeah. All right, excellent. That's a good one, very functional. All right, group B, who's your speaker? Uh, okay. Stand up for a second. Okay, well, um, I learned something about <laughs> I learned how to do a broccoli cheese cream soup. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's so good. I was looking for something under thirty minutes, and um, which it is, and it's just simple ingredients. And I really wanted to share with my family and my boyfriend. 
<laughs> how, did, how did you learn that? How did I learn that? Um, I actually downloaded the Tasty app. <laughs> All right. And um, I was just filtering. I was just browsing, and I saw that it was very quick and simple ingredients, like nothing boring ingredients. So yeah, I liked it. That's good. Super rare. Right. So we bring it over to oh, no. Team A. Who's your speaker? <laughs> All right. So how do we report wildlife and how do we report bird strike today? So oh yeah, bird strike today. Oh okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, no, before solo game, basically. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah. Dude, so the tower call me the process and all that. So. Well, there were some really interesting things that happened here, and I want to kind of point out what maybe you didn't catch right away. There's four ways that most people learn, right? Visual, audio, uh, kinetic, and I'm missing one, a reading, right? So we actually hit on three of those, right? Katie, Team C, learn from a book, reading it out of a book, reading out of their far aim, for example, right? Uh, Jenny here learned a recipe from an app, maybe a video, you know, technology, or so a very visual way to learn it. Uh, this team over here definitely learned by doing, right? <laughs> yeah. A bird strike, and auditory to a way because somebody told you to call the tower and do all these kind of things, so you probably hit it on an auditory way. And of course, experientially, we learned uh, don't judge a book by its cover, something we should all learn, <laughs> right? Um, so those are all different ways that people learn, and we foster our curiosity. So again, in a school in particular, it's such an important environment. And this is gonna be throughout your careers if you move across aircraft and, and different airspace and airports you're landing into. We never stop learning, always keep growing, right? So many different ways to learn and a very important phrase, I don't know, let's find out. All right, thank you everyone. We'll move on to the rest of our waypoints next week.